Uh, I'm delighted to be here for this important event and uh, I've been asked to speak for five minutes on Indigenous service and recognition. I was very fortunate to spend 41 and a half years in the Australian Defence Force uh, and in that time I observed many Indigenous members serving our country. General Jeffrey has al already mentioned um, the regional force surveillance units and let me tell you as CDF I was incredibly proud of those units and uh, when I went to Darwin or up into uh, the northwest and uh, observed them doing their, uh, their work I was really blown away. They were outstanding soldiers with bush skills second to none. Uh, they were the most outstanding bush soldiers uh, in the Australian Army and uh, conducted themselves uh, very well on all surveillance and reconnaissance activities that they undertook in a very demanding environment. Of course, their survival skills were, again, second to none. One of the things that used to amaze me about the uh, Australian Defence Force uh, was the number of Indigenous people that were in the Navy. And there seemed to be a great following uh, into the submarines. And I have to tell you, knowing how Indigenous people are very close to their country, I could never work out how they could get into those submarines and go to sea for many, many weeks away from their country and underwater most of the time. I couldn't have done it, uh, and I take my hat off to those that did. And of course, the Navy valued their service incredibly. Indigenous soldiers have served in every conflict that Australia has been involved in. And of course, as you've already heard, um, in the First World War, they weren't even citizens. There was great inequality in our nation at the time. And yet they volunteered for service uh, with the Australian Imperial Force. I think that it's true to say, uh, we, we use the number as something over a thousand. We don't really know how many served. Uh, but I do know that they served in every, every unit in the Light Horse and in every infantry battalion uh, other than two. We had 60 infantry battalions at the time and there were only two where Indigenous soldiers didn't serve. And they took substantial ca casualties. The casualty rate that they experienced was exactly the same as the casualty rate uh, of everybody else. They won three distinguished conduct medals uh, and 12 mil military medals in the First World War. I think one of the most remarkable stories uh, was the story of the Lovett brothers, Alfred, Leonard, Frederick, Edward uh, and Herbert. Um, they went off to war, um, they volunteered, they're from Western Victoria and uh, they went off as volunteers and remarkably they all came back and yet they'd been in some of the, uh, the most dangerous parts uh, of the battlefield. And then when the Second World War came along, um, 21 years later, they stepped up to the plate again. Unfortunately, Alfred was too old, but the other four served with distinction through that war as well. And that family has contributed 21 members of the family through the century of service with the ADF. Uh, I can't think of another family that has contributed so much to the Australian Defence Force. I know of no other that had contributed that number of, uh, that number of people. I might add, um, I was with Tom Calmer this morning. We both got up at about four o'clock and shared breakfast uh, at the airport. And Tom, Tom told me that Reg Saunders was related to the Lovetts. I didn't know that until I talked to Tom this morning. Of course, when they came back to Australia, no entitlements, no benefits, no privileges. Uh, it was a disgrace. And uh, I know one of my colleagues is going to speak about that in some detail in a moment. And moving on to World War II, as General Jeffrey said, 
the situation didn't change. And I'll tell you the story about uh, a member who joined the Royal Australian Air Force. And he joined as a mechanic. His name was uh, Len Waters. Len Waters. And uh, Len came from Queensland and volunteered for flying training. He did very well on pilot's course and graduated to fly the Kitty Hawk fighter, a very difficult aircraft to fly. He flew 95 operational missions over the islands in combat, on combat uh, duty and did a superb job. He was promoted to warrant officer and uh, discharged in 1946. Again, that inequality came to the fore. He wanted to continue flying. He couldn't. He tried to set up his own airline in, uh, in Queensland. He couldn't get the support from government. And he returned to what he'd been doing before the war. Uh, he went back to shearing. And he wrote in his diary, I'm back to being a black fella. So I think we let him down very, very badly. Um, I might just mention a word about the Anzac Centenary Advisory Board. I chaired it, and one of the things we had as a very high priority uh, was recognition uh, for Indigenous uh, soldiers, sailors and airmen. And we funded uh, the Black Digger, the Black Digger uh, play that was uh, put on um, by Leuven Battelles as part of the Sydney Festival and, of course, choreographed by... Uh, uh, Wesley Enoch, and I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's a wonderful play about uh, uh, Douglas Grant and his uh, colleagues, and it brings out all of the uh, all of the issues that were involved in uh, serving as an Indigenous soldier in World War One, and particularly the coming home uh, to a very uh, a very difficult and challenging, unequal environment. I think the situation today is much better. Um, I've spoken to uh, the Chief of Army quite recently. His Indigenous Pathways Program, putting four courses of uh, Indigenous soldiers um, through training every year. We're now up to 1,089 uh, soldiers. That's 2.5% of the Army. And his, um, his aim is to get it up to 5% in the not too distant future. Uh, these people are doing very well and they're uh, very welcome in the Defence Force because they're very fine soldiers and they will enhance the capability of our Defence Force. So tonight we remember the service and sacrifice of our Indigenous sailors, soldiers and airmen who have served and continue to serve our nation. We also recognise and thank them for their substantial contribution to our nation over 100 years of service. And uh, I'm very honoured to be able to say those words um, because we need to redress uh, what happened in the past. And uh, I think the ADF as it is today with uh, Indigenous advisers, uh, Indigenous uh, culture at the forefront of uh, any welcoming ceremony it is a great step forward. And those soldiers that go out there into the Australian bush and they come from uh, an Indigenous background are second to none. They are great soldiers. Thank you very much.